Mr. Jack Kimball, former NHGOP chair, former chair of, okay, the name of the PAC. It's Granite. Conservative Businessmen's League. No, 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 no. What? Oh, what? The, the one long time ago. Granite State Patriots. Granite State Patriots, That's yes. Right. And now you Michael, thank you, my lord. And now you are with the Conservative Business League of New Hampshire. Yes. You guys just had a great event, overflowing event yesterday for mm -hmm. Ted Cruz at a VFW in Merrimack. And I want to say thanks for coming by and taking a little bit of time with Granite Rock. I'm always glad to do it, Skip. And yesterday was quite a day, uh, and Michael was there. So, uh, Well, we live-streamed it, and we'll be putting the recording up uh, later today. That's great news. Uh, I, I have to say I was very surprised um, at the level of the turnout because it's a Friday work day in 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So obviously a lot of people got out of work early to come and see the senator. There are a lot of children there, too, and I thought that was outstanding to have uh, the young kids there. Um, Loves kids. He's got two daughters of his own, four and six. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to see them yesterday, but I know they may be here today. Yeah. Uh, but I, I have to say, uh, he was very well received. Um, A lot of applause lines. Oh, he really did. And uh, he said the things that, and he's not saying things people want to hear. He's saying things that he believes. That's the difference. Uh, this man truly believes in our Constitution. He truly believes that... We're losing our liberty, which we are every day. And he truly believes we're going over the cliff and that this is kind of our last chance. Uh, I know he's stepping into this because of his beliefs of this country and want, want, is wanting to restore this uh, once great republic. Uh, so when he gave his speech, uh, uh, and, and Michael's right, a lot of applause lines. I mean, people were passionate about him. Uh, and I was very pleased myself. So he's, a, he's a great candidate. He just mm -hmm. is. What's the, obviously you are in favor of him. The question is, is what is his most important attribute to you as a potential voter? The interesting thing for me is he's only been in the Senate two years, but his voting record is superlative. You know, we've seen, you and I uh, and all three of us have seen uh, more often than we care to realize people say one thing and then do another when they get there. Um, that's not been the case with Senator Cruz. Uh, he's, he's, he walks the walk, he talks the talk, um, he, is, he is extremely yeah. principled, and, and he's a believable guy because when he, when, he, when he does vote, he votes based on his principles. Um, and, and that, to me, is what we really need to have at all yeah, levels. Well, Join in. Let me just move this camera around just a little bit. We have another person joining us at this point and, in uh, time. Yeah, this is Joe Horvath. Uh, she is the president of the Seacoast Republican Women. Yep, spin it around, put the... The other way around, so the, so the headset's where you can talk into it. There we go. Excellent. That'll work. And actually, could I ask you to move just a little bit closer to Jack, just because of the field of view of, of the camera? And let me... Uh, we'll cuddle. <laughs> let, let me, well, let me, not that much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we got the, uh, the is, audio we up good. there. This is great. So... Yeah, yeah. I, yesterday was really good, and 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 Jack, you're making the point. You, you know, you've not picked a candidate yet, but there are certain very appealing qualities to Ted Cruz, to his steadfastness of principle, and uh, you know, the question is, uh, is is he going to turn out to be the one that that can handle the, can run the gauntlet and get to the front of the pack? That's going to be something that only time can tell. So why don't you carry on from there? Well, I think the other thing, and Mike, Mike said it best, is I haven't made my choice yet, but certainly it's a short list. And I think, at least now, the thing is that this is the very early stage of this uh, primary, uh, and we're going to have a pretty uh, uh, heavy field. I mean, you've got Scott Walker, you've yeah. got Rand Paul, uh, you've got, you got Marco Rubio, you've got other people uh, that are going to be in this primary that uh, we're going to be looking very hard at. Uh, it's going to be hard fought and so on. But I will say this now, the biggest mistake we make in the state of New Hampshire with respect to usually the top tier candidates uh, is that we have too many good conservatives. And so we wind up splitting the vote. It always happens every single time. And we don't get the person we want in there in there. So we've got to try this time around uh, to really flesh out who we think is the very best candidate. Okay. And with that, I want to bring Joe Horvath into the conversation here. I would say welcome to you, uh, spending a little time here with us at Granite Rock. She is the president of the Seacoast Republican Women. Thank you for stopping in and having a seat. Well, thank you very much for having me. So, obviously, we're, we're, it's going to be presidential primary talk all day today um, because you have probably, even though he's not up there in the polls, 
uh, he, I see him at 6 7 8% all the time. I am seeing and hearing that whenever Ted Cruz shows up, people are just flocking. Not just the media, who's, that's their job to... And I'm wondering, where's all the gaggle at this point? But what was it... That, that, what was your thought process in saying, hey, let's get Ted Cruz now? And was it difficult to get him to come in to speak uh, to the Seacoast Republican women and the Rockingham uh, County Republican Committee? Well, the Seacoast Republican women want to bring in all of the candid- potential candidates because our purpose is to educate the public so that when they go to the polls, they can make an intelligent decision. And was it hard for you to get them to come in? Uh, Ted Cruz was available, and we had connections with that. Um, Some of them are a little bit more difficult, but I think once they realize that the New Hampshire, they have to hit the whole state, we'll get them all. Is there anything in particular that your members are looking for in a candidate at this point? Or is it pretty much, let's bring them in, let them talk, let them give you their own opinion to your members. That's exactly what we want to do. Jack, Mm -hmm. um, expound upon that, because you've been through this a number of times. You've helped candidates a number of times. Um, What do you think? And and, and this is exactly why we've got these organizations, the uh, Conservative Business League in New Hampshire, to bring them in, and the 603 Alliance to help the voters to choose. What we want to do is really focus on, we at the Conservative Business League, 603 Alliance, focus on qualified, as we see them, constitutional conservative candidates, that those are the people we want to really get out there and have uh, as much exposure as possible. Um, And that's that's really the the, the major purpose of these organizations. And the other thing is, talking about uh, getting them out there, the Q&As are very important. I find that you really and truly can flesh out candidates by the responses that you're going to get to some very difficult questions. And there are a lot of questions these days with what's going on in the country. So it's very interesting to hear the responses that you get from Senator Cruz versus Scott Walker versus Marco Rubio to issues like immigration. I mean, uh, and that's a big one. He got that question yesterday. Uh, He Um, he handled it very well. Yes, he did. Um, So those are the things that are going to start separating the pack and, uh, you know, I don't know, are we having a Q&A today or is each? We are. We are. So is it, uh, and I have to ask because it makes more work for us because we'll try to chop up all the questions and the answers one by one so people can get the full measure without making it boring. You know, listen to this two-hour broadcast. No, they're not going to do that. No. But are you planning on having an extended Q&A time, if at all possible? Because I think that it, it really is important. If it's possible, depending on his schedule. Right, because okay. that, that interrupted yesterday. We, we got, a, what, a half dozen questions or so in, and then right. it was time for photo ops and then, then time right. for uh, him to run another gauntlet as he left of more people wanting to talk to him. One of the things that I will say, Michael, that uh, yesterday showed me was uh, that they weren't, even when we had to cut off the questions, the Q&A, there really weren't a lot of people ready to ask a question. And part of the reason why is, he really answers them before you get to ask them in many instances. If you've got a candidate that gets up there and addresses a lot of issues uh, in his talk, it takes away the need to ask questions. Yeah, there's going to be questions. So I think he, he also did that. I think Scott Walker does it to a point and, and uh, Rand Paul as well. So we're going to see this play out. I just thought yesterday was uh, a major success. And there is no question, none in my mind at all. And it's just like what you said, Skip. Um, Ted brings the crowd. He just does. I mean, people yeah. really like him. I'm not sure quite whether it's a Palin-esque crowd yet, but it's a good crowd, and I can see it growing. He's, he's, yeah. he's got, uh, he's, he's got a, an appeal. Now, as I say, there are others that have an appeal, too, that have a presence that, yep. uh, you know, that I could see doing that. Uh, but uh, certainly up front, you know, this is his 15 minutes of fame, and the question is can he capitalize on that and turn it into a, a long-run uh, attraction? Yeah. Joe, we, a, a question for you, Joe. Um, how often will you be running events like this to bring in the different candidates? As soon as we get a phone call, we organize it and put it on. Okay, so you could have multiple events in a single month if Absolutely. necessary or as possible. 
Right. Absolutely. I, yeah, and I love, let me emphasize for our, our viewers and for those candidates who may be watching, the Seacoast Republican women are very active and have a lot of members uh, that can influence votes around the, uh, the Portsmouth, Dover, and, and general Seacoast area, and they put on really good events. So uh, if you're watching this and thinking, uh, how do I get to these people? Just ask because they uh, they do put on good events yeah. and they uh, they are influential. In fact, Joe, what is your website? Uh, www.nhsrw.org. Very good. Nhsrw. And is there a mailing list people can get on to at that link? Um, they can see our membership chairman. They can go on our website for membership. We're always looking for members. We are the largest group in the state now. We have 200 members, and they're all very active. Oh, very good. Well, that sounds, that sounds good. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you very much for spending a few minutes with Granite Rock. Um, hopefully, as things go through and during this event, you'll have a chance to sit down and talk with us some more. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Skip. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you, Jack. And we will, uh, we're going to take another quick break, folks. We will be right back. We are Grok Talk, broadcasting live from the Portsmouth Country Club here in Greenland, New Hampshire. We are at the Seacoast Republican Women's and Rockingham County Republican Committee brunch, where the keynote speaker is going to be U.S. Senator Ted Cruz. We'll be back. <laughs> 